Hi, everyone. I'm Kasha Stewart, head of product for Movies Anywhere, which is a movie streaming platform, which is operated by the Walt Disney Company. I'm so glad you've joined today. I'm going to talk about how to attract, hire, and grow diverse product teams. I'm going to give it a few more seconds, and we're going to jump right in. And thank you so much for joining me for my talk today. Okay, let's get started. A little bit about me. I want to share with you my product journey. So before I jump right in, I'm 10 years in the game. I am a proud Howard University graduate, just as our Vice President Kamala Harris is. I started with a background, a BFA in photography, graphic design, video production. That was definitely my sweet spot. I came out of school, went to film school at Chapman University, graduated, ended up in post-production. And just as the industry was pivoting from an analog world to digital, the movie streaming platforms, um, SVOD started to take off. And I took a freelance job with abc.com which I actually found on Craigslist, but I will talk about that in another talk about how to get hired um, into tech and transition to product. Anyways, I was in content management, content distribution producer, handling multiple assets, workflows, and I had a CMS that wasn't really built with the end user in mind. I started asking lots of questions like, why is this built this way? Why is it so hard to copy and paste metadata? Why does my computer continuously crash when the servers are backing up? And I was politely told, or, or I thought so, I should go into product management since I like to ask so many questions. I was offered a promotion. I went into ABC Family and really began to do um, website development. And that was around the time around, I would say 2011, 2012. And I was offered shortly thereafter a job to join Fox.com as a product manager to host custom uh, product um, websites that were developed for ad sponsorships that were in conjunction with show premieres, how to launch new shows, how to manage multiple multi-million dollar projects. It was a lot of fun working with remote teams, short deadlines, and always an ever challenging um, landscape and roadmap that was changing. It felt like every five minutes. From Fox, I went to Beachbody um, and helped to build one of their beginning streaming platforms, their SVOD, and started with their mobile app development for Android, um, Fire TV, and Roku. And from there, I was called back to join Disney, which I'm honored to be part of Movies Anywhere, which is a movie lover streaming platform for the collectors in mind that allows movies that users have purchased to aggregate all of their um, all of their purchase content in one library for a free service for our consumers. So that's a little bit about me. I'm head of product. I have about a team of eight product managers and content producers. So before we jump right in for today's talk, I was so honored um, that ProductCon had asked me to present today. And you know, my head was swirling with so many ideas. I think I got out of Google Doc and started, you know, writing my heart out about how to launch complicated features with multiple remote teams were some of my topics, how to lead and keep team dynamics during a pandemic, um, how to pivot from, you know output focused um, to outcomes and, you know, probably a cloud cruiser of when's the right time to redesign. And that's actually an inside joke because there's never a good time to redesign. Anyway, um, so I thought I couldn't help notice though in the space, there's one subject and especially after the events of 2020 that we don't really touch upon on the industry and that I haven't seen particularly for product in a keynote. And I started to think of some of the headlines that have touched me about diversity and inclusion, about black employees, and about some of the social injustice movements that happened last year that took a lot of the headlines and also resonated with not only employees, but companies across our country and globally. And I couldn't help but think about the numbers and the data and you know, looking around at the at the numbers, but why is this problem so hard? Why is it so hard to diversify product teams? When I think of product, I think about you know we solve for so many of the unknowns. We figure out the why. We've disrupt archaic practices and you know 
of structures and workflows, and we make people's lives better. But this is something that's a profound um, institutional tech industry challenge that is still plaguing us. And I wanted to just share some of this about through the tweets and through kind of the best practices and good intentions, we're still struggling. And, you know, that corporate America's diversity and inclusion efforts are still failing Black people is what some of the reports say. And for those of you that may not know, it's been found that companies with above average diversity on leadership teams have greater payoff from innovation and higher margins. And I started to think about that. If I'm always hiring from the same data pool, I'm kind of always expecting the same outcome. Although very talented, I'm constantly challenging myself on what could be better, what am I missing? But if I'm hiring the same personality type, the same type of PMs that even resonate with me, I'm also still part of the problem. So, you know, with any problem, I'd like to think about what does the data tell us? And this is pulled from Product Plan, um, recent report for 2020 of the numbers. And you can see that less than 20% of all minority communities are represented in product management. And this is just a data sampling of about 2,200 product management professionals. And then only 15% of senior leadership is held by someone who identifies in one of these categories. Again, the numbers are not great. If I was thinking about, you know, a mobile launch and I saw these numbers, it would be all hands on deck. Let's get our user research. Let me get with my creatives. Let's figure out what this is, ha what's happening. But in tech, we kind of just shrug our shoulders and say, well, this is the best that we can do. I don't know anybody. This is kind of hard. This makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know. I keep, you know, pulling from the same schools. And I found like many leaders that I was in the same position towards the end of 2020, you know, what can I do? Even with my company's large commitment, it may not be using at the pace of what I feel like is innovation or transformative change. Step one, in any process that you're going to tackle a tough problem, whether it's diversity and inclusion or how to build native um, mobile apps, you know, what is the audit? You know, I started with an audit where I wanted to analyze the recruitment process. You know, how do we actually really recruit and hire? If I did a simple analysis of my team, you know, most might have been hired from someone that knew them or that they came from a posting or that they were referred through a family member. There's a number of resources, but we're always kind of building from the same talent pool. What are the internal numbers if you can find out? For some of you in the audience, you may not have, you know, internal support, you may not have HR, and you know, you want to be conscious of what your legal team represents as well. I never want to step on anyone's toes, especially if they're listening today. Um, and do you have access to, you know, or hire a DNI expert or consultant to kind of walk you through this space? You know, if we start to align DNI as part of our um, compensation at the end of the year, I think we can get much further ahead in a roadmap of change than what we're currently seeing in the space. And lastly, do you have open headcount? Some of the changes I am proposing here and from my own personal playbook, as I said, I am not a DNI expert. I'm someone that who is passionate about this. And I want to also contribute to the change that is happening around me and see more people, see more women, see more people that look like me in the space. Um, step two, I just did an informal survey with our teams um, at Movies Anywhere, and I would encourage you to ask them first before implementing anything, whether it's a simple hiring or changing your posting or recruitment process, how does your team feel? I would never start to, you know, re-architect a user experience if the one that I had was working. And I would want to know what my user base feels about the current experience and then what would help guide those changes? So I asked the team, how did they feel about diversity? Did What did they feel like we were doing as a team? How can we attract more people from underrepresented or BIPOC, um, which is Black, Indigenous, People of Color communities, for those that may not know that acronym? Um, what operations do, organ I'm sorry, organizations do they belong to? And would we like to see more company present um, participation from these organizations. And I asked them to rank the following. We had some where, what would they like to see more on the horizon? Whether it was panels such as Brave Conversations 
Was it a Slack channel? Was it a community calendar? What really resonated with them? And just share, and this is for illustrative purposes, just in case um, my legal team is watching this presentation. Um, this is not the actual numbers, but I wanted to show you my process and what I actually went through. And everything that I'm sharing today is something that I put into practice. It's not something that I put um, in a hypothesis and never tested. I really feel like this is a beta that we wanted to kind of have a short and long-term goals and plans on how we could start to change our team's um, representation and our cultures and our our culture and our dynamic. So from this, we, you know, you know, because DNI is a team effort. It's, you know, we wanted to give the opportunity for individuals to lead themselves, that they feel empowered, that we are acknowledging that we can do better with the numbers that we have, not only from a hiring standpoint, but the representation and the culture that we are building. These are some of the um, highest ranked things that came back from the team, from mentorship, having a speaker city series. And one thing that I found surprising that I didn't necessarily know would resonate so high was implicit bias training. You know, sometimes people want to do something, they don't know where to begin, they don't know how to start the conversation, they feel uncomfortable, and then they kind of just pivot or exit out of it altogether. And that was something that really kind of drove me to think, wow, this is bigger than just how I feel as a Black woman, this is also impacting my counterparts as well. And having a Slack channel where people could just exchange, they could raise their hand if they wanted to volunteer. And again, um, this was all voluntary information we at Movies Anywhere in my team made it anonymous, but if it's better for your team, if you're able to do that, just so you can begin to collect some um, data. And step three, in any good product um, cycle or product development, you want to set goals. You know, now that you have some data to go after to kind of build your baseline of your hypothesis of the direction of where you want to go, whether it's for a roadmap, whether it's for a product vision, whether it's simply for me that I want to change the hiring and recruitment process, I needed to have some levels of objectives, a time frame, how I would measure that success, and what are the challenges and dependencies. Again, this framework is basic. We should know this like the back of our hands. We do do this every single day, either in feature or platform development. And it really challenged me, why can't I do the same and apply these same principles to a problem that's been plaguing us traditionally for far too long? Um, and I wanted to kind of look over here at this quote um, from Marty Kagan, um, you know, inspired for those of you that know his work and recently most his recent book, Empowered. Um, but when I think of objectives, this is the thing that really resonated with me that objectives do not need to cover every little thing that the team does, but they should cover what the team needs to accomplish. And for me, I wanted to have, you know, higher representation just within my small little nucleus of my product team. That could be my baseline objective. And what are my key results to actually do that? And, you know, to show you to walk the walk um, or talk the talk that I've been doing in this presentation, I wanted to share with you kind of here's a way for you to have goals. Again, these are attainable. Some of this is what we call low hanging fruit. Some of these are gonna carry us. And again, this is not everything from, you know, my explicit, you know, roadmap, but this was the beginning for me to put one foot in front of the other, take that information, see how it's growing, see how I can iterate on this, see if I'm getting feedback from the team. And, you know, a top line goal, make DNI training accessible for the larger team. From that simple survey, finding out that people really wanted to have implicit bias training and, you know, make it available for managers and even for our executive team and have a D, uh, diversity and equity and inclusion consultant come in and help us navigate through that process. Again, if you have budget, if you have room, if you have the autonomy to do that, here are some ways that you can get started. 
Another thing was to increase Black and African American representation from a certain percentage to a larger percentage over the next 12 months. Really simple, really direct KPIs and baseline goals that everyone could understand and digest. Um, intentionally focus our recruiting efforts on Black and African American talent to build out a pipeline. This is not a, you know, once, once and done or once you're finished and kind of I've done that, I've checked off my box and now I can throw this away and I don't have to think about it. You want to start to grow a pipeline. And I do talk later in the presentation of organizations that you can reach out that are specifically focused on finding product talent. Community support and mentoring, making an annual commitment to investing in underrepresented tech companies and nonprofit. This allows people that may not be in a hiring that may not have direct port reports, but really um, participate in partner in this idea that we are a community, we're an organization, we're fostering a better diverse community um, compliance, or I, I don't, maybe a compliance is not the word I wanna think of, um, but mentoring with inside of the organization where we could offer a hackathon, we can partner with black girls who code or girls who code. And then that allows someone who doesn't have a direct report to also participate in changing the landscape of our team. Um, step four, the fun part, recruiting. Um, you know, one of the easy things that we can do, but is kind of a missed opportunity is to develop more inclusive copy in our job descriptions to attract diverse candidates. You know, how do you write a job description? How does, what does inclusive copy look like? Where should I post? These are some of the questions that just, you know, as someone who never did this before, who never thought about this, where does this come from? Um, one thing that you should consider, do you have internal BERGs that you can start and BERGs for those that don't know, Black um, employee resource groups that may already exist. Have you thought about posting to those groups internally first? And what organizations are best to recruit diverse talent? So I took this right from my playbook. I was in a position where I had headcount for a product intern for fall semester. We kind of pull from the same schools. I won't mention any names. They are great schools. And in California, I'm sure you can imagine they're the big schools. And we do get phenomenal talent. Um, but we, again, are constantly building that same pipeline. And then when we do have headcount, we're like, oh, where do we look? for more diverse talent, but we've never engaged or haven't made an um, effort as much to engage with HBCUs, which is historically black colleges and universities like Howard University um, or like a Hampton or a FAM. We have never had those type of contacts or community with them. So again, if we don't have that pipeline, how can you expect to have a talent pool? So one of the things that I did, and this is just me um, not really accepting no, or, you know, I do like to move at an accelerated pace. And I think that I have a large network and I never know who's watching or who's listening on LinkedIn. And I just took to my LinkedIn one afternoon, explained that I was looking for a product intern and also wanted to really capture the culture of innovating features. Some of the features that we launched at Movies Anywhere last year during the pandemic were screen pass, where you're able to send a movie to a friend or family, a member, um, watch together. Some of these great kind of features that we're a small and nimble team, but we really raise the bar. We move quick and fast. And I wanted to you know, have someone that wanted to be excited about that and work in entertainment tech. Um, so I focused on that, loves to solve problems. And I just told a little bit about myself in case someone who was reading this that did not know me, my product leader, DNI advocate and proud HCU um, alumni. And I encourage, you know, HBCU students to apply. I used a couple hashtags, had a phenomenal, you know, from this little post copy that probably took me five or 10 minutes to draft had a phenomenal return of students that I would have would not had under our normal um, recruitment process. And I was able in a place that we were receptive to um, taking new leads from other schools. And it worked out really well um, with the summer, um, with the fall intern, which is now turning into the spring intern that we have um, for my team. 
And, you know, one of the things that I'm a believer of is start, you know, if you don't know where to start, at least start here. Um, these are great um, uh, uh, organizations that are in the space that have talent pools. And I've dealt with all of them. I'm members of all of them. Uh, some of my favorites, Black Product Managers. Black Women in Product, I hope some of you are watching today, Women in Product, um, Tech Ladies, and Diversity in Tech. Again, this will be posted. I'll, I'm sure Product School will post this. I'll post it to my LinkedIn. Um, all of these phenomenal um, groups. And then I listed my internal resources. You know, I'm fortunate enough at the Walt Disney Company that we do have some really strong internal um, bergs, such as the Bond, Wakanda, and Vibramian. Vibramian. Oops, they're going to kill me. Uh, Black technologists at Disney, <laughs> which is a Slack channel for us. Um, but that's where I started. And I had an overwhelming number of students respond. Um, I actually took someone that had a computer science background and allowed them to, you know, interview or they were selected um, and went through our um, process and ended up being hired. Um, how can we measure success without any great product launch? You need to have, you know, measurements so you know that something is successful. Um, if you have the support of HR, you know, keeping checks and balances, full transparency, what's the number of posting jobs that you advertise in these diverse networks, number of black candidates or BIPOC candidates that apply, number of candidates that were interviewed, number of candidates that were offered roles and number that accepted. Again, really simple, straightforward. You, this is a starting point if this is, can work for you. And just another example of companies that I think are doing great with post for attracting um, diverse candidates. So I just wanted to share that, not just only share my, um, my uh, post, uh, but other from ones from other companies. Um, and I wanted to include this for just things to avoid. Sometimes I hear, well, you know, I have good intentions. Why is that not enough? I'm a good person. Um, those are all great, but we have to move past that to have real transformative change. And one thing that I have heard from my colleagues and even reading in, you know, recent articles of the New York Times, you know, there's this idea of requiring BIPOC employees to volunteer or lead diversity initiatives. I took this upon myself because, you know, I was challenged and I wanted to make change, but not everybody wants to do this and they're not obligated to. So just keep that in mind that if you do hire someone from this group, um, um, it's not then to have a um, dog and pony show for them to be the lead for every diversity and in, um, inclusion and um, initiative. It's not a zero end game mentality. You have to have a starting point. Um, and then also address some of the, the resistance or emotional feedback that you may hear from the teams of why are we doing this? Are we lowering the bar for diverse candidates? It's a big myth. There's a broad talent pool of people that I often see are overqualified. And, you know, personally take action, move past panels and tweets. Um, we launch so many things globally as a community. Um, this is one small step forward that we can, everybody in this room can probably um, take and take a step towards. Um, as we takeaways for this today, think about what's going to be impactful. Create a DNI roadmap. I'm a big believer of roadmaps. That's probably my sweet spot. Um, figuring it out, um, having milestones and checkpoints for what you're trying to accomplish. Redesign your recruitment strategy. This was just a grassroots effort that I started and it resulted in many candidates, even led to an engineering intern. And now I have plenty of interns to, or school relationships with people to choose from for the upcoming semester. Design best practices for your org. Some of the things may work, some of the things may not apply. Again, check with your HR and legal if you're concerned. Those are always good places to start. But if you are someone that wants to push forward innovation and change, um, definitely uh, start with a grassroots tactics like I've listed here. And consistency is key, like anything in our, in our world, um, iterate. This is just a beta for me. I can see a vision past this, but I needed to have a place to start so that I could have some data that I could actually start to move the needle and change the, the data and the recruitment efforts um, for instead of them being a plateau from year over year like we have in the past. 
Um, that's it for me. Thank you so much for coming and joining ProductCon and allowing me to share this space. Um, I hope to do it again. And next time I can talk about, you know, more complicated how to rep manage your roadmap. But today this was really important for me to address, especially to product teams on how we can start moving forward and, and change things. You can find me on LinkedIn, I'm Kasha Stewart. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. And I hope in your next interview process, you will give someone a chance that does not look like you. Thank you.